with motor vehicles, they cause a lot of problems on the wet Florida roads. We don't have great roads in Florida. And when they get wet, they're really slippery and you've got a lot of elderly drivers in their Mercury marquees. So um, you have a $500,000 limit on the liability of the owner of a vehicle when the driver crashes it. So if I let my son drive my car, if my son has 500,000 of insurance and he's driving in Florida, unless I was negligent in trusting the car to my son, I do not have liability. Now the Hulk Hogan situation, which you may have heard of, and you know who Hulk Hogan was, 100 yards from my office, I wasn't there so I didn't hear it, his son crashed a car, somebody got hurt, and Hulk Hogan paid a $5 million settlement on that car. The reason was, I think that, he, I believe that he was, a, he was accused of having been negligent in trusting his son with the car because there was a lot of testimony or there was a lot of publicity about buying beer for his son. So you want to be careful with motor vehicles in Florida. When your children are in college in Florida, you don't want to be anywhere near the title to the car that they drive. The person who takes the learner or the minor to the Division of Motor Vehicles to get their first license has to be the parent and has to sign, and that signature is a guarantee that any liability that that child incurs on the Florida motorways to anyone is the responsibility of that parent. So you don't want the child driving the father's car and the mother signed that guarantee, and you want to, be, you want to understand that they have this obligation, it can cause a lot of problems. There's our old airboat. It did 65 miles an hour on the water. It only displaced half an inch of water. It did 15 miles an hour on the land. It was a lot of fun. It blew off $185,000, I mean, 185,000 185, mile an hour tailwind, but we could only get $100,000 of insurance on it. So we kept it a little while, then we sold it. Boat stands for bring out another thousand. When your client buys a boat, please be aware the two best days of the boat owner's life, the day they buy it and the day they sell it for 30% of what they bought it for after they pay half of what it was worth in repair bills. And that's every kind of boat in Florida. But if you're going to buy a boat, put it in an LLC. Because if I own the boat and I'm asleep under the deck and George is operating the boat and he's negligent, I'm responsible because I was on the boat at the time. So you have to be careful with boats, but a lot of clients like to have boats. Set up an LLC, have the LLC buy the boat, because if you put a car or a boat from personal names to LLC name, you pay sales tax no matter what. There's no exception for cars and boats. Or the, air, and, or the airplanes except for the one exception that I stated. When you have a landlord-tenant relationship in Florida, if it's a triple net lease and there's a special provision that says that the tenant can basically do whatever they want on the property without the landlord's consent, then the landlord is not responsible for the tenant's negligence. If you don't have that special clause in there, then the landlord is responsible for the tenant's negligence. I'm going to skip here to page 91. We have a screwy situation in Florida on the, on the property insurance situ, uh, side of things. That situation is caused by the hurricane problem. The statistical odds of a hurricane have caused just about every major insurance company to refuse to write typical homeowners coverage in the state of Florida and that's been for many years. So Florida has its own captive carrier. It's called Citizens Insurance, and Citizens Insurance will issue these policies. They're fairly expensive, and then in addition, you need very expensive flood insurance if you're getting financing or you don't want to suffer additional problems from the flood. Before your client moves to Florida, especially if they're going to live near the water, make sure that they are very aware of the insurance cost and the flood insurance cost. But above and beyond that, Citizens only issues $100,000 of liability insurance, and most umbrella carriers start at $300,000. So your client has to buy what's called a donut policy, usually from a company called RLI. 
R is in Roger, L is in Lemon, I as in I'm here. And once they buy that, so they need three policies. They buy the citizen's policy, the RLI donut, and then their normal umbrella policy. Now, if you're a lawyer watching this, I think you understand umbrella policies, but if you aren't or you want to be brushed up, go to YouTube and search Umbrella Poppins Gassman, and you can watch this YouTube video, What Mary Poppins Didn't Know About Umbrellas, and it will bring you up to date or up to speed. Not much has changed since August of 2011, except that I'm older because Ponce de Leon did not discover the Fountain of Youth. The other thing to know is that when your client buys rental houses, or you advise a client to transfer rental houses into LLCs, you will be very unpopular with that client if you do not warn them that the Florida insurance industry doesn't like LLCs owning residential real estate and they charge more to insure it unless, except for five L, uh, carriers that I'm aware of. If you want the list of the five, send me an email. I'll be glad to tell you who they are. Otherwise, what you can consider is an asset protection trust is what I call it, but basically father could be the grantor, or father and mother can be the grantor of an irrevocable trust, mother can be the trustee, or better yet, make the, the judgment-proof nephew the trustee, that buys the residential house, and then the, most of the insurance carriers don't mind it. Another silly way to do it, and, and under the Florida Trust Code you have insulation, Another silly way to do it is, believe it or not, if my LLC owns my house, they don't want to insure it. If my own LLC owns a land trust called the Allen Gassman Revocable Land Trust, which owns the house, same situation, but they will insure it. So you do have to communicate with a good property and casualty insurance agent before you advise clients with rental properties in Florida. Um, and keep in mind that a property and casualty agent has a lot more education and credentials than a rank-and-file agent who writes residential and routine stuff. So you really want to deal with a P&C agent. It makes a, a big difference. And if you want to do well in Florida with an, a complicated client, just write a letter to all their insurance agents telling them all the things you know about all their assets and the insurance and telling them, please make sure there's no gaps. There will be gaps. There will be changes that need to be made. A lot of times the clients have property up north and in Florida, they don't realize they need two umbrellas. The umbrella carrier doesn't know about the northern property. So that's another uh, practice enhancer for you to help keep clients out of trouble. Now, Florida revised its LLC statute in a lot of complicated ways, January 1st, 2015. It is most prudent to review LLC operating agreements from before January 1st, 2015 to make sure they're in compliance with the, with the new act. But to be quite honest, I have not seen a problem yet. But I see a lot of problems with operating agreements anyway that we'll talk about in a minute. The new act has something pretty neat. It's called the Statement of Authority Rule, which is, let's say that I, I get a new client and I say to the client, do you realize that all I have to do is put your name in at the SunBiz website, S-U-N-B-I-Z, and it automatically tells me every, every company you have. And then all I have to do is go to the county appraiser website, and that tells me what each property is worth. And I know all about you, and I never met you. We could set up a Colorado or Delaware or Nevada or Wyoming LLC make it the manager of your LLCs, and those states don't allow for disclosure. So when somebody sees the rental house, they want to know who owns it, they see that ABC LLC owns it, they see that it's managed by XYZ LLC in Wyoming, they can't figure out who owns it. Client says, great, go ahead and do that, I want the anonymity. Well, which is different than a C anonymity, but anyway, what if somebody figures out that that's happened and they show up at a title company with false ID and steal all the assets? You can file a statement of authority which says, the public is hereby on notice that ABC LLC owns property in Pinellas County, Florida, and it is not to change title without the permission of the law firm of Gassman, Crotty, and Nicolo or the CPA firm of ABC XYZ. That prevents the theft it's an extra safeguard. It's first 
it's first done in Tallahassee, then registered in the county, gives your paralegal something to do, and also allows the, 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 your client to stay anonymous. Please keep in mind we have a lot of Canadians in Florida. Canadians, Canada law treats LLCs like C corporations for Canadians. Don't let a Canadian invest in an LLC in Florida unless you've double checked to make sure that it's not going to do them substantial damage or they won't share their Molson's with you. Some other things, page 96, our Florida regular corporation or professional association statute, we call it a PA, not a PC. That was even before professional, uh, before personal com uh, computers. Simple filing fee, annual report fee, not much different than what you have up north. Our LLC, our PLC, um, our limited partnerships, our limited partnerships are a little bit different than up north because we have a $1,000 filing fee to form it and a $500 annual report fee to keep it alive. So our LLCs really do everything a limited partnership would want to do. The most advantageous thing about a limited partnership now is whether a client can understand an LLC and whether a creditor would react better to a limited partnership. If you want to use a limited partnership for a Floridian, if it's not actively engaged in business in Florida, you could form it in Wyoming. Wyoming has tenancy by the entireties like Florida does and has the same good protection of charging order. If you don't need to use Wyoming because you don't need TBE, you can use Colorado, I mean, Colorado, Nevada, Delaware and save that $1,000 filing fee, $500 a year. Please also know that we have an LLP statute, a limited liability partnership. It's only a $50 filing fee, $25 annual report fee, it'll give you that firewall protection, but it will not give you charging order protection. And a lot of advisors don't realize that. So an LLP is a limited liability partnership. Every partner is a general partner. It'll give you firewall protection, but not charging order protection. A limited partnership is a traditional limited partnership. The general partner is responsible for liabilities, but we do have a limited liability, limited partnership, just like the other states do now, but that's not to be confused with a limited liability partnership. Someday I'll write a poem about all that, so it'll be more clear. It'll probably mention Peter Piper and a, some pickled peppers too, but that's the way um, we have it. Page 97, you can use this when you talk to clients or CPAs about how their uh, entities are characterized from a tax standpoint. Florida does have a very generous and easy to use conversion statute. So you can convert a regular corporation into an LLC or a limited partnership into an LLC or an out of state entity into a Florida entity. And of course, if you have a regular corporation taxed as a C Corp or an S Corp and you convert it to a Florida LLC, you want to file a Form 8832 with the IRS within 75 days. Roses are red, violets are blue. Don't forget to file your Form 8832. So those are a few things about now. Uh, page 98, some common mistakes. LLC operating agreements can easily disqualify S elections by violating the second class of stock law. I'm not going to go into great detail on what that means. You can have voting and non-voting. But if you have any sort of provision in an LLC operating agreement that says Clyde has a better right than Harry, you're in trouble. You blew your S election. Also, if you have husband and wife, my wife and I enter an LLC agreement with another couple, and the LLC agreement says if any of the spouses dies, then XYZ happens, well, that could wreck tenancy by the entireties. So you want to carefully read any LLC operating agreement and make sure you didn't lose that. Also, consider an intermediary entity. This isn't Florida, but you need to consider it. Your client sets up a family LLC, and on your advice, they put a hedge fund investment into it. They put an LLC that's doing a real estate deal into it. Turns out the hedge fund was a Ponzi scheme, and the clawback to your client takes all the assets out of the family limited partnership. Turns out the real estate deal had a capital call provision. Your LLC is responsible. So what you should have set up was three LLCs, a family LLC owning subsidiary LLC 1, which would have owned the hedge fund, subsidiary LLC 2, 
which, have, uh, which would have owned uh, the real estate deal LLC. And by the way, Florida does not recognize series LLCs. Delaware has a law, I think other states do now also, which says you set up one LLC, but it has separate cells in it, and those are all protected from creditors. I have set one of those up in Florida, and I've told the client I have no idea whether it will work. I would rather, much rather just do separate LLCs uh, with separate owners to get charging order protection in case for some reason the parent company has an issue. Page 99, we do have a uh, pa section five. We have a uh, complete situation in Florida where a lot of CPAs are forming and drafting LLCs and doing them all wrong. And it's, it's against the uh, license of the LLC to do that because it's clearly the unauthorized practice of law. Don't let your clients just go to legal zoom and mess it up. Uh, pay us now or pay us later. Make sure that you review that operating agreement or that somebody reviews that operating agreement because we just find so many mistakes in there.